Cause baby like ooh. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a 23 books I loved in 2023. Kind of a yearly wrap up, but I decided just to kind of do the 23 books I really loved instead of going through every single book I read. I read about 60 something books this year and I do think I loved way more than 23 but these are like the top books I read that I can't get out of my brain that I read this year. I'm gonna kind of go through this in like kind of categories and the first one is series and some other books I read this year were also in series but these are like books that like I finished the whole series this year so I'm counting like the whole series as one book if that makes sense. So first up is probably a ton of people's top books this year is the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. I only have the second and third one so this is the second one obviously but it's just so pretty and I just loved this series so much it was so easy to get through the third one had just come out and i know a lot of people were disappointed by the third one but i actually loved it i was perfectly content with the ending and i just loved all three books the magic of it there were balls there were dances i loved the main guy jacks the plot line was fun it was such a good ya fantasy just easy to get through and there was maybe a little bit of slow moments here and there, but overall it was so fast to get through. Next series is the Chestnut Spring series. I love this. I loved this series so much. Every boy in the series I was in love with. Theo from Reckless was definitely my favorite. I loved Reckless so much. I loved Winter in that book. Too. Alice follows Rhett and Summer. Summer is his boss's daughter and he is a bull rider. Flawless and Reckless, they're bull riders. The second book, Cartless, is kind of a nanny trope. And then Powerless is uh, kind of a hockey, I wouldn't say hockey romance, but the boy is a hockey player and the girl is a ballerina. Hopeless, the very last one, is Bo and Bailey and I loved Bailey so much. Bailey was probably my favorite girl of the whole series and Theo was my favorite guy but I just highly recommend this whole series for romance. I will say there is obviously a good amount of spice in it and I tend to try and steer clear from spice but in these books I was pretty okay with it just because it wasn't just that. It was like you actually got to know characters, you actually got to know storylines, and it was like, it wasn't just those scenes. There was so much other stuff that you got to read. So yeah, I definitely recommend the whole Chestnut Spring series because it was just so good. Next is probably my top books of the year, and that is magnolia parks just look at the cover she's beautiful i loved these books i'm currently like halfway through the great undoing but i just every single book jessica hastings writes is so beautiful her way with words is just insane and i have loved every single book she's put out so far in this series and I also read another one of her books that she just came out with. These books were just so beautiful. I do understand why some people didn't like them because they have a bit of like toxic romance in them, but I just think they are so well written to the point where you are rooting for them and you are always like, you don't want them to be together because they're so toxic for each other, but you also want them to be together because they love each other so much that you obviously don't want to be rooting against them. It's such a found family. You get to know everyone so well and it's just so good. Julian hates, I think I've said this probably in every video I've ever made because I just finished A Long Way Home and I'm now reading A Great Undoing, but Julian hates is my favorite. I love him so much. I don't know why. I can't really pinpoint why exactly I love him, but I just love him so much. And then I also love 
Daisy hates. I think I just love the hates family. But obviously I love BJ too. I love, you kind of hate him in this book, but you love him in the next Magnolia Parks book. Yeah. So I technically didn't finish the series, but it's the Akatar series. I read the first two this year and I always kept saying I was going to read the third one by the end of this year, but it is now December 13th and I haven't even started that book. So I don't think I'm going <laughs> to read any more of the series, but I loved the first two books. The second one was definitely my favorite as it is I think a lot of people's, especially since it gets better after the first book. But overall, the first two books were so good. I'm pretty sure once I finally got into this book, because it was a little bit slow, in my opinion, to start with, once I got into it, I probably read the last half of this book in a day, if that, if even 24 hours, because I just could not put it down. I'm probably one of the last people to read this, but if you're also like me and we're kind of procrastinating picking these up, definitely pick them up. They are so good. I think they're also good if you've never really read a fantasy book before and you're kind of just wanting to try something out. I think these are really good to start your fantasy journey. The next two series I'm talking about, I don't have the first books to them, but these are the second books to them. So first one, I think everyone's also read this, but it's the Addicted to You series or just Addicted series. And I'm currently, I just finished the third one and I'm on Kiss the Sky. So technically, again, I haven't finished the whole series, but I thought I'd kind of group it all together with just the Addicted series. And I really love the found family aspect of it. Rose and Connor are probably my favorite and I'm ready for their book Kiss the Sky next because I'm doing like the tandem thing where you read Addicted to You or where you read the Addicted series intertwined with the Calloway Sister series. So I'm super excited for Rose and Connor's book because that's next. And I think Ricochet was where I got super into it. I read the first one and I was like, okay, this is good. But then I read Ricochet and that was where I really started to get into the families and into all the characters and everything. So definitely if you read the first one, I highly recommend trying out Ricochet before you decide you don't like it because Ricochet was where I really started to fall in love with the series. The next series I read is a trilogy and I haven't really heard pretty much anything anywhere about it but I found this book um, a couple years ago. I read the first one and it was through like a subscription book box thing and I had gotten the first book and I read it and I remember loving it. And then this year I kind of saw it again and I was like, I actually like that book. So I reread the first one and then I read the second and third one. So the first book is called New World Rising, but it's kind of just New World series. It's New World Rising, New World Ashes, which is this one obviously, and then New World Inferno. And it's kind of a dystopian book. It's definitely... It's definitely not fantasy, it's more dystopian. And I just think it's so good. I loved the main girl in this, Phoenix. I just loved her personality. And then you also get to know some of the side characters really well, and I fell in love with them too. And I definitely recommend this book. I know it's not very popular. Again, I haven't heard like much of anything on any platform about it, but I highly recommend it. It is so good. It's by Jennifer Wilson now after the series i think i'm just gonna go through all the books i read the first ones i'm gonna do are just the ones i have with me because some of the books i read are still up at my college apartment and other ones i read on kindle so these are the books i personally have with me the first book i have is aristotle and dante discover the secrets to the universe i actually read this last year i read the second book to this which is aristotle and dante way something with water so but i highly recommend both books i love aristotle and dante the relationship they have it's just so beautiful and it's definitely more of just kind of a coming of age book the second one i read this year i think i loved more than the first one because you already know the characters you already know everyone and it's just kind of a continuation 
and I loved it so much. I love Dante with all my heart. He is so precious and I love him so much. But yeah, obviously read Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe first and then read the one I read this year but I recommend both books so much. Next book is a super fun summer read. It's The High Tide Club by Mary Kay Andrews. I read this within two days on the beach and loved it so much. It's definitely just a super light-hearted mystery. Honestly, I wouldn't even say it's really mystery. More so just uncovering some secrets that the characters have in here. And I just thought it was really good. I gave it like I think I ended up giving it a three and a half stars. But for just a fun, easy summer beach read, I highly recommend it and I did really enjoy it. Next are two classics. I actually read these for a class I took last semester, but first was Frankenstein and I loved this book so much. Five out of five stars. I enjoyed it so much more than I was expecting. And I think everyone should just read this book, even if you don't really like classics. The only classics I'd really read were Jane Austen and like one Ernest Hemingway book. So I didn't expect for me to like this as much as I did. And I enjoyed every second of it. I read it in like a day and a half, I think. For class, I obviously had to read it kind of quickly but we had like a I think we had two weeks to read it and I literally read this in a day and a half because of how much I enjoyed it it was so good I highly recommend if you're trying to get into classics this is such an easy read and it's so fun next classic is a picture of Dorian Gray I really like this book too I gave it four stars and I really enjoyed it so much again like the last one I was not expecting to like it as much as I did but it was super enjoyable and it was really easy to get through actually. And even though I had to read it for class, I still loved it, which is also a plus that it didn't make me hate it. Cause sometimes if you read it for class and have to dissect it, it kind of makes you not like the book as much, but I did still love this book. Next book is technically a series, but I was only able to get through the first one because that is Game of Thrones this big boy I read this year and I loved it so much. I want to read the second one but I didn't want to put myself into a slump with reading the second one right after this one just because of how thick they are. And these are obviously adult fantasy books too so it is a bit more of brain power to get through so it did take me a while, but I did end up finishing it and I loved it so much. I'm actually reading these before I watch the TV show. So I'm super excited to finally be able to watch the TV show after I read these because I'm a big book before film or TV show person. So I'm reading these first, but I loved this book so much. The only reason I would say I had a little bit of a problem with it is because it was a little bit hard to get into some of the characters and kind of connect with some of the characters because you're switching point of view so much that you're only getting a little bit of a character at each time but once you really get into the characters and love them it gets so much easier you love the point of views and I do really like the fact that it was a different point of view because I feel like once you got halfway through the book, you knew about so many different characters and you were able to connect with so many different characters. So I love this book and I'm definitely going to read the second one and maybe the third one, depending on how long it takes me to read the second one in 2024. The next book is If He Had Been With Me. I saw Sarah Caroli read this and she loved it. So I picked it up and I loved this book so much much it did make me cry at the end just a warning but it was so good it was such a good little YA it's technically a romance but I would also kind of say it's coming of age too but it definitely has like the tiniest bit of romance in it or I wouldn't say tiny bit it does have romance in it but I would say it's also kind of a coming of age YA read and it was so enjoyable and I loved it. Next was probably one of my first books I ever read in 2023 and that was Better Than the Movies 
and I kid you not, I read this in one night. I remember I think I started it I think I was sick one day in January. I remember I started this like mid-afternoon on a random January day and I didn't get out of my dorm bed until I finished this book. Like I think I skipped dinner and ended up eating dinner super late just because I read this book in one night and loved it so much. I thought it was such a cute YA romance. I haven't read any other Lynn Painter books but in 2024, I definitely should because now that I'm thinking about it, I love this book so much and I always think about it. So I'm kind of surprised that I haven't read any of her other books. But that'll definitely change in 2024. So I'm definitely excited to read more of her books, but I loved this one so much. The last physical book I have is a book I read literally a week ago and loved it so much. It's Never by Jessica Hastings, her new fantasy series she's come out with and I loved it so much. Again, as I've said previously, Jessica Hastings writing is so beautiful. I love her so much. I follow her on Instagram and I'm obsessed with her. And this book was so beautiful. It was so magical. It's a re it's kind of like a continuation of Peter Pan. I love how she wrote the characters. I love how she wrote Peter Pan and it's so good. I grew up on Peter Pan, so it's super nostalgic for me and I loved it so much. So now onto the books that I don't have with me and I either read and they're at my college apartment or I read on my Kindle. The first one I actually read as a library book and it was Happy Place by Emily Henry. I love this book so much. It's probably one of my favorites of her. I think Book Lovers is still my favorite Emily Henry book I've read, but Happy Place has definitely gotten up there and I loved it so much. I'm waiting for it to come on paperback or I want it on paperback because all my other Emily Henry books are paperback. So I'm waiting for that, but I just loved that book so much. Emily Henry never misses. I feel like her writing is just so good. The next book is Love Theoretically. I actually picked this up like a week and a half ago, just on a whim. I didn't know what to expect, but I just wanted a cute little rom-com and I ended up giving it five out of five stars and loved it so much. Reading Elsie was like reading me as like a people pleaser and I loved it so much and I love how she writes women in male concentrated workplaces and Jack is one of my favorite book boyfriends ever now. I think about that book all the time now. Next two books I read on Kindle Unlimited. The first one is Behind the Net by Stephanie Archer and I remember seeing Destiny read this book and she loved it so much so I read it and it's a hockey romance and it is so good. It had me smiling the whole book. I loved the male love interest in this book. He was so I'm, like I just loved him so much I just don't even have words I just loved him so much he's a new favorite book boyfriend also and I also really loved their dynamic as well I thought they were so cute and it was also such an easy read again most of like hockey romances are pretty easy to get through and I again was just smiling and giggling the whole time reading this book and loved it so much. The next book I read on Kindle Unlimited is actually a holiday romance. So I read it like a week and a half ago and I actually read it for the first time in 2022 and then I reread it again this year because I remember how much I loved it. So it's technically a reread but it is such a cute holiday romance book and I was again giggling and smiling the whole time reading it. It was so cute and I typically like don't feel this much love for like a holiday romance. Typically when I read like Christmas romances I'm just kind of like okay that was cute and then be done but I always think about it and it's fake dating trope and it's just so good. So definitely recommend Baggage Claim. It's on Kindle Unlimited and it's just so good. I thought it was the cutest thing ever. Another book I read is Transcendent Kingdom. I think I pronounced that word right. And I don't know how to pronounce the author, but I'll put the book obviously here so you can see the author's name. I think it's like Yasi. 
I'm so sorry if I'm completely butchering that. It's about this girl and she's doing a research study on how addiction affects your brain because her brother actually died of a I can't remember the drug but it's an addiction she he died of an addiction and so it's kind of showing her while she's doing that but also dealing with family struggles like her mom is really struggling with depression and she's kind of taking care of her mom and then she's also going through a lot of spiritual warfare and kind of like figuring out what she believes if she believes in god and like kind of what that looks like and it's such a good literary fiction book and i loved how it kind of there was a good amount of like flashbacks into her life like she talked a lot about her dad and talked about her brother before he died and it was so good i highly recommend if you love literary fiction or you want to get into it i highly recommend just her just the author in general but also this book the next book is Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. I loved this romance so much. It's more so Christian romance, but you can obviously read it if you're not a Christian, but it does have a lot of like religious aspects to it. It was so beautiful and I love Francine Rivers writing. I have a couple more of her books, um, like the masterpiece on my shelf that I want to get to next year because I loved her writing so much. but. Even if you're not a Christian, I highly recommend it, but especially if you're a Christian and you really want to read a beautiful Christian love story, I highly recommend it. It's, I'm pretty sure it's based off of the book Hosea and it's just so beautifully written. Next two books are by the same author and I'm realizing I really love her writing. I know she's not like the most loved. A lot of people I feel like are kind of neutral about her books, but... The first book is Wait For It by Mariana Zapata. Obviously, it's a romance and Mariana Zapata is known for her slow burn romances. And when I say slow burn, I mean slow because typically it takes them like 90% of the book to finally get together. But when they do, it's so cute. And I kind of love her slow burn because you really get to know each couple and I love how much like the chemistry builds up and I love how they always kind of form a good like friendship or just kind of not so much relationship as in their like dating but a good relationship whoever they are so wait for it is um a single mom she is technically their aunt but she took over the kids when her brother died and there's this guy that moves in close to her house and they get to know each other and the rest is history and it's a guy that moves in near her house and they kind of get to know each other and yeah a slow burn into a romance and I loved it so much I loved um I'm guessing it's pronounced Diana um is how you pronounce her name and i loved her so much in this book and she was just such a good female character and i loved the book overall and so the next book is another mariana zapata book and it's colty which is kind of like a soccer romance and i don't know anything about soccer i don't even really like soccer but i really love this book and I thought it was kind of going to be weird because he's her soccer coach, but it actually ended up being really fun and a really good read and I remember reading it in like two or three days, even though her books are pretty big. But yeah, I ended up loving Colty as well. The next book and the last book I have is Springtide. I read this on Kindle Unlimited also and I'm pretty sure... There's another book out that's kind of like in the series. It also has a fake dating trope. I really love fake dating trope, especially if it's done super well. It's probably one of my favorite tropes if done well. It can also be one of my least favorite. Sometimes they're not done very well, but in this one it was done so well. I think if I remember correctly, his name is Luca. Now I'm like blanking on his name, but Luca is like my 
like this is how you write a grumpy male main love interest because I feel like some people write like a grumpy sunshine book so poorly and not done very well but this book is done so well with a grumpy sunshine trope and I loved it so much. I remember reading it in like a day again and it was just so good but those are the 23 books I loved this year. Comment down below some of your like hall of fame books you loved reading this year. I had such a great reading year this year and loved a good amount of the books. I don't think I really rated many books under three stars so I had just such a great reading year and obviously this is the year I started my YouTube channel too so such a fun year and I can't wait for 2024. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night and just week in general and I'll see you guys next video. Bye!